So we're going to solve, and we're going to solve these by factoring. It doesn't say to do that, but that's the only way we know to solve equations like this. So let's go through the whole process one last time here, and let's make sure we got this down. So um, first thing I need to do is factor this. I'm going to turn it into something that looks like this. Oh, thank you. I'm going to turn it into something that looks like this. And in order to do that, I need to do the X in the box. Actually, do I need to do the box for this one? We don't. We can get away with just the X. The reason is because why? Because A is 1. And when A is 1, we don't need to do the box. While we're at it, let's write down B and C. And then let's set up our X. So this is one of those shortcut ones. We do not need the box. Remember in our X, the top is A times C and the bottom is B. A times C is negative 24. B is negative 5. And I'm looking for two numbers that add to negative, or multiply to negative 24, add up to negative 5. You guys found some over here. What'd you come up with? Negative 8 and positive 3. All right, that works. Those two numbers are going to help me find my factors. My factors are both going to have an X in them. That's because A is 1. And then those two things are going to go into my factors here and here. All right, so we've got it factored. Now we just need to come back and solve it. I'm going to do that in a moment. Let me go ahead and factor number two first. And then we can come back and solve both of these at the same time. So let's go through the steps for factoring this. How many of you noticed on your own that this one had a GCF? Did anybody factor that GCF out before? And your numbers were much smaller, so I'm going to do that too. All of these are divisible by 2, so I'm going to factor a 2 out. You end up with 4x squared minus 4x minus 15. It's still equal to 0. And I don't think there's any other GCF because I can't think of anything that goes into 4 and 4 and 15. Are we going to be able to get away with just doing the X on this or do we need the X and the box? We need both here because this time A is 4, B is negative 4, C is negative 15. So let's go ahead and build our X in our box. So the top of the X is A times C, 4 times negative 15 is negative 60. Bottom of the box is B, which is negative 4. I'm sorry, the X. I kept saying box there. I meant X. We'll get to the box in a moment. Looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 60, add up to negative 4. 6 and 10 should work if we make the right one negative. Which one should be negative, the 6 or the 10? We need them to add up to negative 4, so we want the bigger one to be negative. So the 10 will be negative. Now, if A was 1, we would stop here, and those would be our factors, x plus 6 and x minus 10. But A is not 1, so we have to go on and do the box now. So let's fill in the part from the original problem. We had a 4x squared, and we had a negative 15. Those, and, and then the other two corners come from the x. 6x and negative 10x. Now we need to find our outside numbers to make all this work. So focusing on the top row, what's the biggest number you can think of that goes into both 4 and 10? 2? 4 doesn't go into 10. So it's 2, yeah. So that's 2x. So that would make this 2x also. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times something is negative 10x. This must be negative 5. 2 times negative 5 will give us that negative 10. 2x times something is 6x. This must be a 3. So after all that work, now we've got a new version of our equation. That 2, that GCF, is still sitting out front. But now we can factor that quadratic into 2x minus 5 
and 2x plus 3. All right, so we got them both factored. This is the new stuff. If you weren't here on Tuesday, this is what you missed. If we have something factored and it's equal to zero, we can split it up and we can make two small equations out of it. So this will be our, the new thing. We've got to finish both these problems up. This is like divide and conquer. This only works if you've got it equal to zero. These two factors are going to create two smaller equations that we can solve. And we'll get our two solutions. So we'll do plus eight on both sides to get x equals eight. And this one, we'll get rid of that three by doing minus three on both sides to get x equals negative three. If you have not already, can you please finish up number two? Do the same thing. You have three factors. Please set them each equal to zero. So create three small equations and solve them to find your solutions. Just use your algebra steps to get x by itself. Now one of those equations doesn't even have an x in it. It's not even a true statement, so we'll just throw it out and ignore it. The other two equations can be solved, so use your algebra steps to solve them. So pretty long process on especially that second one. We just had a lot of steps to get it factored and then a bunch of algebra steps to finish it up. Does anybody have any questions on that second one or the first? <laughs> 